This is the Grundig P25-449-12 CRT TV. It's probably from 1991, that's what an internet source suggests. It's a portable television, quite small. Screen size looks to be about 10 inches. The tube appears to be pure flat. It almost appears to be pure flat, but it's slightly curved. But it does give quite the flat impression. To compare it to a 9 inch PVM, I'll put that beside like that to give one a bit of an idea. Now, on the front of this unit, on the Grundig, there's the power switch push in and out and there is some buttons to control other functions now it looks like like obviously the buttons are missing the tactile switches are inside but the buttons you normally push to activate the commands are missing now the TV did come from professional use so I'm guessing that maybe they took those buttons out so things couldn't get changed accidentally that's my best guess we've got some inputs over there Composite video in, audio in, and a headphone out. If we go on top here, there's actually a built in antenna that rotates and extends. The antenna extends. There's our side. As you can see next to the Sony, the Sony's a little bit longer. Then around the back here, we want to see the goodness that's on the back. Of course, we have the, the SCART, that's how the Mega Drive's hooked in right now, that's the important business. So we have the SCART socket there. And we also have an RF socket here. The antenna, this is the antenna that's on top, but thankfully you can remove it and then put in any RF device, any RF console that you might want to also. It appears to be a, a vacant hole up above the RF input. And then over here, you've got the figure eight lead that plugs into power it. So that's 240 mains voltage right now. You can power it off mains voltage, but you can also slide, slide this little slot cover down for battery use. I don't know if Grundig's got an official battery kit for it. It's probably 12 volts powered off your car possibly. Hence the portability factor again. And then there's your label and your chassis number CUC 4200 made in Austria what we'll do now is we'll undo it and have a look inside we have the back off four screws and there's four there held the back case on no cables connected to the back case easy to slide off I should point out also that you can carry this TV here when the back case is on there's a bit of an alcove there to carry it few standing up PCBs, little chassis, and the tube. What have we got here? It's it's a Hitachi, and I'd like to know where it's manufactured. Oh no, it's made in Japan. Yeah, good. That's what we like to see. Made in Japan. I can't see any dates at this point in time. Oh, that's interesting. Why is there? Why is this plug disconnected? Looks like the Degau circuit. How strange. Why is that actually, why is that removed? I might have to look into that later because I used the degaussing one before turning, well after turning this on to get out the, the color impurity, but it's strange that that's disconnected. Anyway, there's just the one speaker there. You got the anode cap on the side, not on the top. I don't actually see, I do see a few, a few adjustment pots, but I'm not sure if they're for geometry. I think the service manual would need to be consulted for this because the television doesn't have any on screen menu, so it's going to be all manual from the back here if you can do it at all. One can see that there's some shenanigans have been had inside here. Look at that power switch there. The metal bracket for it's been twisted and bent. Power switch may have been replaced at some stage. And then there's that plug. There's a peculiar 
plug just there. for a while because it's clean underneath it's got two crimp pins inside the plug in there they might be acting as a jumper because they look linked and this degaussing coil plug it doesn't appear to be a matching socket anywhere on the PCB for it I don't know if it slips over onto any of those pins down there but as it is for now I think that'll remain a mystery Well, the main thing is the TV does run RGB. Again, the Mega Drive's plugged in there. I should point out that this is the matching remote. It's a fairly small remote, model TP621. And there's the back. I'm missing the cover. It uses 9 volt battery. We hadn't yet moved on to the double A's or the triple A's at this stage. What I am interested to find out is the capability of the composite video to see whether it can do both PAL as expected PAL but as well NTSC. I don't know if a TV of this age being Grundig will have NTSC playback but I'll put a PlayStation 2 in and we'll find out. I've still got the Mega Drive running as you can see but I also have the PlayStation 2 hooked in the front by a composite. I'm going to turn the PlayStation 2 on you can see there's a bit of interference there now because both consoles are basically sharing the same input assignment. I'll turn the Mega Drive off. So there's the PlayStation 2. Let's just see. It looks pretty right. This PlayStation 2 is a PAL console. It does have a mod chip in it. But it is in PAL mode at the moment. And that appears to be fine all the colors are right so what I'll do now is boot an NTSC game and that'll test whether the composite video on the TV is capable of displaying NTSC signals via composite with HD loader I've got several games copied onto the hard drive I'll load a load Sega Ages Wonder Boy this is an NTSC game now if this is in color and well, it is, it's color there, that's a good sign. I think we're pretty much right then. Yep, well, there we go. We've got a 60 hertz picture, and we have the color from the NTSC, so it's got compatibility over composite video. That pretty much concludes the video. It's, it's just, it's a nice little television. It's good for inputs, it's got RF, it's got composite, it's got SCART RGB, so that's quite a variety. It's portable, you can power it off 12 volts most likely. So it may come in useful for those who want to carry a TV around, play Smash Brothers in the car before you get to a tournament. I know that's popular. I don't know if you're able to adjust any of the geometry. You can see that the picture's out at the top slightly right now. I'll move the camera up. You can see the bezel of the TV and you can see the display there. It's not quite in center, so that may be one disadvantage with this little bad boy. But as it stands, it's a nice unit, good picture, an interesting aspect of Grundig's history. Uh, it just came into my lap, like some TVs and monitors do. You go for one thing and you get another thing instead. But thank you for watching. It's been a while since I put a video out, but I certainly intend to do some more. Again, thank you for watching and see you next time.